Hey Architect Nation, Enix Sears here and in today's Architect CEO update you'll discover the number one secret to marketing your architecture firm. Right now I'm standing on the bank of a canal in London on a little workation so which basically means that I'm working while I'm also here on vacation for a month with my family and yesterday was a particularly long day. You probably know how these go. I was sitting, I had didn't even leave the home because we have strong internet there. Even though I'd rented an office, I decided to work out of the home for the day. And so literally for nine hours I'm sitting there at my desk in front of my little laptop and you know, it can be very tiring doing that. So by the end of the day I was feeling quite tired, wanted to go out and get something to eat. Yesterday I had a, a lot of things to do. I, I led the Dream Practice Accelerator coaching call that we lead every Thursday. I had the Freedom Formula call that I do with Scott Beebe also on Thursdays. And so at about, about nine o'clock at night, I finally decided to head out and try to look, try to scrounge up something to eat. And what was remarkable is as I'm walking down the stairs of the little flat in which we're staying with and I open up that door and I step out onto the street. So we're on Upper Street, which is in Islington, which is a fantastic area, just restaurant after restaurant after restaurant, a lot of hustle and bustle. And as I stepped out there and I looked around, suddenly I realized that I'm in London, right? So I'm from California, and in California, you're not gonna find anything older than a than 100 years. And then, but here in London, you have such an amazing city fabric of old buildings, of interesting textures, of sounds, of sights, of restaurants, and people. And so I was just overwhelmed by this pure tapestry of people, of buildings, of nightlife. And it really caused me to reflect. And I had this, just this feeling of, of gratitude in my heart that I have the opportunity to be over here, have a flexible work schedule, and that we're able to take our kids over here and experience a different country. And I thought, you know what, it's interesting how, how easy it is to get so focused on what we're doing at the moment that we lose the big picture of what's happening around us. It's so easy to focus on what we're doing at the moment that we lose the big picture of what's going on around us. So I took about 15 minutes and I walked up and down Upper Street just looking at the different restaurants, just absorbing all the sights and the sounds of the city. Now having said that, I would say that having living here permanently, that might get a little overwhelming. I kind of do like my, my little town in Visalia where I live where it's nice and quiet, we can go to the mountains, we can go to the rivers, we can go to the beach, but it's nice here to be on vacation again, experience that tapestry. So how does this relate to marketing an architecture firm? And what is the secret to truly marketing a firm? Well, it's it's not Instagram, although that works. And I have uh, I met a lot of architects that are absolutely doing amazing things on Instagram. It's not social media. It's not taking out advertisements. It's not doing SEO. It's not paying for ads or paying for some lead generation service. It's simply this: getting out and meeting with people, building real relationships. Now this is no surprise to you, you probably knew this already, but here's the thing, I know working as an architect, it is much too easy to do what's comfortable and familiar and to leave the things that may not be as comfortable and familiar. So what ends up happening is we end up looking at the computer, just working at all the things that are in front of us right now, instead of taking time to get out and to meet with other people, to see other people. So I'm here on this, on this, uh, this canal, it's pretty amazing right now. And if you're listening to this, obviously you can't see it. But behind me, they have these, these boats that are on the canal. And it, it reminded me of the, uh, the, uh, the autobiography or biography of Richard Branson, How I Lost My Virginity, great book on entrepreneurship. It talks about when he was originally starting his Tower Records, first, first very first store, he lived with a girl on one of these little canal boats and very low cost of living and it talks about how he'd get out every day and go to work. So again, we see this principle at play that to make things happen, to be able to get out of the boat, you know, to be able to make things happen, to be able to build his entrepreneurial journey, he had to get out of the boat and he had to make something happen. If he would have just stayed there on the boat, Virgin Records never would have happened. So what I would have you consider today is how can you work networking time into your schedule? And it's important that that when you're networking, you're not just going to groups of architects, because I see this too often where it's, it's too easy to go to people and associations and groups where we all feel comfortable. But what can you do to be able to get out there and meet people that would help you increase your network, increase your, um, increase your contacts, and potentially get you the kind of products you want to work on? So by the time you listen to this, I might have already released an episode with an architect Matthew Rosenberg of AMRAD. He has done some amazing things. It's a small little architecture firm based out of Los Angeles. And what Matthew's done over the past three years is absolutely incredible. He's grown his practice from about two people 
to, I think right now, about 16 people in his practice. He's doing, he just did this amazing hillside home, and I think it's in Beverly Hills, a spec home with a developer. Absolutely incredible. It's like, it's like 10,000 square feet or something, and you know, all these glass walls looking out over Los Angeles. He's doing projects all over. He's just got a hospitality project. He's going after a project up in Canada, his homeland up in uh, Calgary, I believe it is. And it was remarkable to talk to him and to see what was his secret to being able to grow his architecture firm so quickly. Uh, because he actually is not even an American citizen. He's from Canada. And so for the first entire year working here, he couldn't even, he couldn't even work professionally. He, had, he said he spent the first year just kind of doing yoga and going on jogs and stuff like that. Um, but when he finally did work, how was he able to go from zero network in Los Angeles? Well, he had a bit of a network because I think he went to SciArc. But how was he able to go from that to building a practice with 17 people that is, that's profitable, that's making money, and that's actually, even probably more importantly for a lot of you and a lot of architects, is actually doing fantastic, very, very interesting projects. As a matter of fact, I think he just, they had just completed a project um, that they wanted to do some some little housing units up in Yosemite, which is really cool. Very forward thinking, very cool looking project. But here's the key, when I asked him how he was able to do that, he said it was because he took time out to network and this guy was persistent. So he would literally fly to New York specifically to meet with the rector, um, developers that he had handpicked out. So he'd identified them, he saw that they their kind of vision aligned with the kind of work he wanted to do. And he literally would fly to New York specifically to just meet with them in person and basically, and you could call it pester, you could call it be persistent, but he would just, you know, talk to them again and again and again until they gave him time. And then once they gave him time, then he would, he would give them a little pitch about the services he could offer. So again, our parable today is just like I was stuck in my room all day long and maybe feeling, I was definitely feeling overwhelmed and feeling a little bit low energy, kind of down. You know, it helps to get out. It helps to build those relationships because the people are out there and you know this, you know this, because you know the architects that are winning lots of great, fantastic projects, the clients that I work with, who are being able to up-level their projects, it's all because they have a method, they have a technique, they have a framework for getting out, meeting people, forming those relationships, because architecture truly is a game of trust. So that's all for today. Now, if you haven't already gotten my free video course, go check out dreampracticewebinar.com. You'll learn on their tactics and strategies, not only for marketing your firm and winning the kind of products you wanna work on, but also how to basically set up a self-managed firm so you can focus on doing more of the work you love. Now, if you're listening on the podcast and you don't actually watch these videos, go subscribe on YouTube. I'm standing in this little square where these two canals meet right here, and there's this very interesting building behind me here. Don't know who designed that, but it's quite, quite fascinating. As always, this is Enix here signing off for today and reminding you, carpe diem, seize the day.